Because uh, what I'm going to suggest is right off the bat, don't forget this. You folks probably have more talents and more skills to offer to the BLM and the Forest Service and the State Land Department than you give yourself credit for. And the skill that you've got to market, you've developed for years looking at interfacing with the land and with the animals out there trying to accomplish some positive thing. And all I'm going to try to do today is get you to think about your cattle, your sheep, I'm glad that there's a sheep operator here. The last one of these I gave, I was the only person that raised sheep in the audience, so I took a, a lot of grief about it. So, the only one too. so we, we sheep producers can commiserate together then, right? Come on. Well, don't forget, though, about these sheep producers. A lot of these ranches were paid for with sheep. That's right. What I, what I want to talk about and start off with right away, we all look at our livestock as a direct market com commodity, okay? As Don Ryerson used to say, our sheep and our cattle are just a leather bag that we sell our grass in. And when we look at that, folks, we have to constantly deal with these vague markets. Always have to look at market change, market trends, do they want lean beef? Do they want uh, fatter beef? I'm going to suggest today that you start thinking about the fact that you and your livestock are a service. If the BLM, if the community, if the county, if the state wants a change in the plant community, who better to do the job in an environmentally benign way than you folks? And who better to do it in a low-cost manner. So what I want to tell us is there are tremendous opportunities outside the box. You know, if this little goat kid never gets out of this cardboard box, he doesn't have much in life. All he knows is those confines. Now, I'm going to suggest today that we think about things outside the box. But you already heard about it today. Recreational access to lands, the western watershed, Man, oh man, this is the time you folks were smart to be in Prairie County. Because you don't have any trout streams. Because if you don't have trout streams, you don't have to deal with the western watershed. There's this constant tension between recreationists, even in Montana, and livestock producers. The UN got into the whole mix this spring publishing a, a book called The Long Shadow of Livestock in which they attribute most of the world water quality and water quantity problems to livestock. Not just the United States, the entire world. And on top of that, like I already said, and some folks mentioned it's time to go to the bar, you, you've got a lot of personal, emotional energy tied up in all of this. That we've got to deal with this constant hassle over livestock grazing on federal lands. So we need to change public attitudes about our livestock grazing. And I threw this little picture in right here because this is what John Marvel and his company want the public to think lands that are grazed by livestock look like. And every one of you in here know that that isn't the case. But I'm going to suggest that we have a great opportunity as livestock producers in the state of Montana to demonstrate that livestock can be a positive force for accomplishing livestock or landscape changes. And the two big ones right now are maintaining wildlife habitat and fireproofing local communities and homes. 